Hello my friends, welcome to tackling PMP questions using the SPQ approach. Let's jump into the very first question. It reads, you are the project manager on an engineering project involving several contractors and team members. The stakeholder management effort has proven to be very significant in the first few days. You have completed the identification of stakeholders. Previously, you had difficulty managing stakeholders because no distinctions were made among them regarding influence or authority. What information do you need to include in the stakeholder register? I'll give you a few seconds. If you need more time, hit the pause button. All right, so let's take a look at the options. What do you need to include in the stakeholder register? But again, the purpose of these exercises is to get you into the mindset for the exam, not to just answer a bunch of questions, right? I wanna show you how to think. So this is how you need to think. You need to think about questions like this. You need to see them like this. Situation problem and the real question. Look for the situation in the question, look for the problem in the question, and then attack the real question. So with that model in mind, let's see if we can identify the situation, the problem, and the question. So here we go. Here's the situation. You are the project manager. And then it goes on and on, okay? And it ends around here. And then it gives you some history, some background. The management effort has proven to be very significant in the first few days, still part of the situation. You have completed the identification of stakeholders, still situation. Previously, you had difficulty managing stakeholders because no distinctions were made among them. So this is part of a problem right here. Okay, so going to the problem section, I will use a different color just to highlight that. So let's use some green and previously you had difficulty. This is a problem. Difficulty managing stakeholders because no distinctions were made among them regarding, there we go, influence authority. And then the real question, again, I'm gonna use red to show you the actual question and uh, let's use red here. So what information do you need to include in the stakeholder register? Oh, that's the real question. So let's think about it. If you've got a question like this, the whole history that came before it is not really significant in helping you uh, towards the answer. The last line, what information do you need to include in the stakeholder register is really where the meat is. Now, on the PMP exam, you don't know what you're gonna find. You could find some questions that have some very specific information that can help you unlock a question, and other times it's just redundant. In this case, it is semi-redundant. It does help in putting some context into it that it's a stakeholder question, but you don't really know the details, all right? So at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and answer the question based on face value. So let's take a look. Change requests for new stakeholders. In this case, you know that your stakeholder register will not contain change requests for new stakeholders. So we're gonna get rid of that. It is not A. And then B, stakeholder engagement plan. No, your stakeholder engagement plan is not included in your stakeholder register, is it? It's not. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel option B. It cannot be that, can it? Yeah, can't be that. And then let's look at option C, stakeholder classification. Ah, now think about it. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah, it does. So we're gonna keep that in our back pocket and we're gonna look at D, stakeholder benefits management plan. That is not in your stakeholder register. That's a totally different document. And through the process of elimination, you are able to select the right answer. Of course, it's stakeholder classification. So the answer is C. And I know lots of you can answer this question a lot quicker but I know some people are just getting into it. And if you're just getting into it, I want to alert you to the fact that your PMP exam is going to be made up of questions in this SPQ format. 
but they could also be an SPDQ format where there's a distraction placed in. Now, I wouldn't call a lot of the information that we saw in this first question a distraction, but I would say it is just needless and tedious stuff that could have been omitted, but it makes the question more challenging, so you gotta be aware of that. Let's take a look at one more for today. Company It's A Go authorized a multi-million dollar project after COVID ended to get their 500,000 workers on a new work authorization project platform. The first project manager had conflict with management due to interpersonal issues and resigned. It's a go, just hired a new project manager to replace the former PM. The new project manager is very capable in scheduling, budgeting, and management, but weak in overall administration and procurement management. What should the new project manager do to start guiding the team towards project success? Again, my friends, like I have heard from a lot of people on the current exam, right? This is 2022, 2023. I've heard that the questions are really long. This question has a lot of detail. Just look at all that. And this is all story story, right? So the, the first project manager had conflict. And then it's a go, just hired a new project manager to replace a new PM. So it sounds like there's a problem in the conflict part, but that's not so relevant to the question, right? The question is, what should the new project manager do to guide the team towards project success? So when, when you whittle it down, my friends, if, you, if you're able to master this concept, you will be able to hone in on the real question. What should, you could even say, what should a project manager do to start guiding the team towards success? All the stuff that came before, like this, the situation, right? It's so long-winded and it has very little value towards the question in this regard. And a number of the questions are like that. I'm not saying all, but a number of the questions are like that. So we got the situation, the problem, we haven't really found uh, the problem in anything that came before, but it's really around here. So there's an overlap, and we, we took a look at something similar earlier. There's an overlap of the problem. What should the project manager do to start guiding the team towards project success? So it's a question wrapped up with a challenge. What should a new PM do to guide a team towards success? You get it? So all the situation, the project manager is very capable in scheduling, budgeting, management, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff is just story. So it boils down to a question loaded with a problem. So you could say some of the stuff like this, I would say you have some distractions in there. If, if you're not focused on, on the, what the question is actually asking, you're gonna get caught up in, in this and I'm gonna make this orange or let's make it, uh, let's make it uh, purple. So, so this stuff here, project manager is very capable in scheduling, budgeting, and management. This is really distraction stuff. Weak, it, it tries to make that sound like a problem, but it's not the problem. The real problem is what should a new PM do to guide a team towards success? You get, you get where I'm going? So when you look at a question, I need you to laser focus, to see the situation, laser focus, to understand what the real problem is. You gotta cut into all the crud, yeah, get through the situation, get through the problem, if it does exist, and understand what the distractions might be, right? But it, it has to be fast. And that's what I need you to do, to, to hit the content super fast. So let's take a look at the options. A, review the project charter to identify goals and deliverables. So your new project manager coming in, can you lead a team without understanding the goals? You could try, but it won't end very well. So knowing your goals is definitely a good thing. Let's go to number the B. Uh, adjust the project schedule to add a new activity related to the knowledge transfer process. Again, that's presumptuous. You don't just jump into a project and adjust the project schedule without understanding where the project is at, without understanding the charter. That's a good thing to do before. So we're gonna get rid of B. So the way you can look at it, just ask the question, is B better than A? No. Is C better than A? Let's look at C. Consult the project log for notes on procurement and sellers. Again, that whole thing of distraction 
saying that you're weak in overall administration and procurement is trying to derail you. So this is a distractor that goes in line with the purple stuff that I've highlighted up here. No, and there's really no such thing as a project log. That's a made up, made up thing. And it's just trying to make you go down a, a blind alley by saying procurements and sellers look for notes on that. No. And then D, revisit the project budget to determine if extra time is needed. Well, what connection does that budget have with extra time? You see, again, it's trying to sound intelligent, but it's a red herring when you boil it down. So it's not that. And the best answer to this, my friends, is A, it's review the project charter to identify goals and deliverables. All right. I hope that gave you some guidance in how to think through this stuff. I am not here to show you a bunch of questions to test firepower. No, 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 no. I want you to take the concept and put the concept into action on your exam. Cut, cut out the crud, cut through to the heart of the matter. Identify what the real problem is and use process of elimination to disqualify what is bogus. But there's one thing I want you to remember. Your exam is going to have a lot of what should the project manager do next? Now, now, we don't have enough time for this one today, but I just want to show you the questions up front, right? What should the project manager do now? What should the project manager do first? That is what you need to expect. And as far as the length, you could get questions that are this long or this long. You absolutely could. Uh, I've heard that a lot of the questions are between three, four lines long. It's not unusual to have those, but you just need to be battle ready. <laughs> you need to be battle ready, my friends. All right. I hope this gave you some context. I hope it helps guide you towards success on the exam. Remember, if you're looking for solid mock exam, go on down to mock.hpmexam.com. If you're looking for a book that can really help you put your arms around the content, it's going to be the PMP exam immersion book. All right. So go on down to our channel. It's the Praiseon channel, Praiseon. And when you go to Praiseon channel, look around because you're also going to find a free 40 day, 40 days to PMP exam success that is based on this book. And you can watch all the videos and get really tight for the exam. Just look for the 40 days to PMP exam success playlist. All right, my friends, talk to you soon. Bye for now.